People have been playing with small balls of stone, clay, or marble since ancient Egyptian and Roman times. Today's marbles are actually made of glass and used for industrial tasks as well as games. Glass is not only inexpensive and durable, but also quite beautiful. To make marbles, this company melts recycled glass with marbles made earlier but rejected for being the wrong size. All this goes into a kiln heated to 1,204 degrees Celsius. After 16 hours, they open a door at the bottom of the kiln and the molten glass flows out. A shearing device cuts the stream every half a second, forming segments called slugs that become marbles. To make different sized marbles, they adjust the device to cut at shorter or longer intervals. The slugs slide down chutes, landing between grooves on spinning cast iron rolls. The spinning keeps the slugs from sticking. They'll need 72 hours to cool completely, but their final appearance is already set. That was determined back in the kiln when the airflow drove the heat to melt the glass and mix the colors. These channels separate the good from the bad. Openings along the way weed out the marbles that are too big or too small and collect the ones that are just right. More intricate marbles are handmade. This craftsman first preheats some clear glass in a small oven. Then he breaks off a piece of colored glass. After the clear glass has melted in the furnace overnight, he gathers some on a steel rod, then picks up a chunk of preheated colored glass with it. He forms a knob and works the mass into a long string that's up to 5 meters long and thin as a noodle. He'll use them in various colors to decorate the clear glass cores of the marbles. He gathers a clump of melted clear glass on the rod and shapes it with wet newspaper, which won't stick to hot glass. After shaping the end, he rolls the clump on several preheated colored glass strings. Then it's back in the furnace. He repeats these steps up to three times and rolls the clump on a metal table to even out the surface between each trip to the furnace. Then he adds a layer of clear glass on top. With another tool now, he stretches the clump to about half a meter long. He'll use this to make several cores. To make the second layer of the core, he rolls a five centimeter long segment onto colored glass slivers called ribbons. After rolling them in the furnace to melt them, he flattens the ribbons with pliers and snips off the excess at the ends. He wraps the core and the ribbons in a layer of clear glass, then hand shapes it. Now he rolls the core on more glass strings. Then it's back in the furnace to meld them. He adds one more clear glass layer and the inside is finished. That's a total of six layers for this marble. Other models have fewer or more. The craftsman shapes the glass with several metal and wooden tools. He measures the diameter with metal calipers and gradually sculpts a sphere. He'll make up to five marbles from this segment, ranging up to the size of a golf ball. After scoring the glass with a knife, he places it in the open end of a pipe to hold it. Then he gently taps the rod, which breaks the glass, and releases the sphere. He melts away the bump left at the spot where the glass broke. Next, the marble goes into an oven at 530 degrees Celsius. The oven slowly cools overnight to strengthen the glass. Clearly a cut above, this eye-catching, handcrafted marble is already an objet d'art.
Thank you.